In this video, we look at multiplying and dividing fractions. These days, with the wide use of calculators and computers, you might wonder why we even need to bo bother about fractions anymore. We can just use decimal approximations or decimal values. Well, it turns out we actually use fractions quite a lot in our lives, so knowing how to work with them can be quite useful. Fractions often represent things like the rate at which things happen, ratios and proportions, shares of whole things, and relative change. And they're even used in everyday things like cooking, so being able to combine different fractions is actually quite useful in everyday life. So as a result, fractions often appear in equations too. And we'll look later at how to, how to work with fractions in equations and solve those equations. Before we get started, as usual, just remember some terminology. We call the top of the fraction the numerator and the bottom the denominator. Multiplication of fractions is actually one of the most easy things you can do with them. So multiplying uh, a fraction creates a new fraction, which is made up of the product of the numerators, the product of the tops, and the products of the denominators. So for example, if we had a, time, a on B times C on D, we'd end up with the fraction A times C over B times D. You can extend this as much as you like, as you can see in this little rule here. A simple example of this would be if we had one half times three quarters, in other words, one half of three quarters, we could write one times three and two times four to give us three on eight. So a half of three quarters is three eighths. But the same rule works even when we're working with algebraic quantities. Check out some examples. We're going to simplify the following products of fractions by carrying out the multiplications. And if possible, once you've done that, you can cancel out any common factors to reduce the fraction to its simplest form. Now the first one is kind of like what I just did on the previous slide. Seven on nine times two on three. Let's just work with numbers first of all. 7 by 2 gives us 14, and on the bottom, 9 by 3 gives us 27. So we've carried out the multiplication. We should check for any common factors to see if we can reduce this. 14 on 27, I'm pretty sure they don't have any common factors. 1, 2, 7 and 14, and here we've got 1 and 27, and 3 and 9. Uh, there doesn't look to be anything there, so we'll just leave that one as it is. Have a go at these couple now yourself. Give yourself a minute or two to work through those, and then come back and check out how I go through it. Okay, so in part B, we've started to introduce algebraic quantities, variables or letters. So we have 2 on 3 mn squared by 4 n squared on mp squared. It works exactly the same way as before. We multiply across the tops to get 2 by 4 is 8 n squared, and multiply across the bottoms to get 3 m by m gives m squared, n squared, p squared. So the multiplication is done, but now we should just check to see if we've got anything common that we can cancel. 8 and 3, there's nothing to do, but n squared will cancel with n squared, and we're left with 8 over 3, m squared, p squared. And that's our multiplied out fraction. Part C is a bit longer again. If you haven't had a go yourself, maybe pause now and have a go at that one. Okay, so we have 5x minus 2 over 10x multiplied by 2xy over x minus 2 all squared. So as usual, when we multiply across the top, 5 by 2 gives us 10, xy, x minus 2, and then on the bottom, 10x, x minus 2 all squared. That's the multiplication out of the way but we should check for anything we can cancel, any common factors. Clearly we can see a 10. We've also got an X. There's no Y's on the bottom, so we can't do anything with that. Then we do have a common factor of X minus two to the one to the first power, so we can cancel one of those. And we're left with Y on the top and X minus two on the bottom. And that's the product of the two fractions we started with. So that's multiplication of fractions. What about division? Well, dividing fractions also creates a new fraction, and it's really closely related to multiplication. And what we're going to use is the reciprocal. So to divide two fractions, the first thing we do is look at the number that we're dividing by, in this example, c over d, and we swap the numerator and the denominator. We 
which of course we probably know is the reciprocal. We change the division sign then to a multiplication sign, and then we carry out the multiplication. So A over B divided by C over D becomes A over B times D over C. We can see the reciprocals there. Finally, carrying out the multiplication across the top and across the bottom gives us AD over BC. So some examples here. First of all, a, a simple one just with numbers. 2 on 7 divided by 9 on 4. We leave the 2 on 7. The number we're dividing by, 9 on 4, we change to its reciprocal, 4 over 9, and the division becomes a, a multiplication. And we clean that up as 2 by 4, 8 over 7 by 9, which is 63. Look for any common factors there that we can cancel, and I don't think there are any, so we're going to leave it like that. Have a go now, if you like, at this rather long version of an example. You can see that there's actually going to be some factorising that you need to do in there first. Have a go at that one now. Now there's a few places you could start here. One is to work on factorising the quadratics on the top, but what I'm going to do is immediately get rid of this main division that's going on. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 16 over x squared minus 5x plus 4. That's the numerator of the main division. Instead of divided by this fraction, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal. So I'll have x plus 1 over x plus 4. That's the reciprocal of that. Now I'm going to look at factoring. Now remember x squared minus 16, that's a difference of two squares. So I can write that as x plus 4, x minus 4. And on the bottom, x squared minus 5x plus 4, that's one of those trinomials that we've learnt how to uh, factorise. Now if you're not sure, do give yourself a moment to try this one out, but I'm going to write that down as x minus 4 and x minus 1. We're still multiplying by this same piece here, x plus 1 over x plus 4. Well, you know what? We can do multiplying of fractions fairly well now. Let's get rid of that multiply sign and just extend the line. So we've got x plus 1 and x plus 4. So we've done our multiplication, or in this case actually a division, and we can go through to looking for any common factors that we can knock out. I can see an x minus 4 on the top and the bottom, and also an x plus 4, top and bottom, so I can cancel those, leaving me with x plus 1 on the top and x minus 1 on the bottom. Now, there's not really anything else I can do with that, so I can just leave that one as my result of this division up the top. So there we go. That's our video on multiplying and dividing fractions. We've seen that to multiply fractions, all you need to do is multiply the denominators and multiply the numerators to create a new fraction and simplify whenever you can, cancelling any fact, uh, common factors. We've also used the reciprocal and our knowledge of fraction multiplication to divide fractions as well.